like Jennifer said, I'm an organizer for Tech Omaha. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of people in this room know what Tech Omaha is. Yeah, show of hands. Pretty good mix. Okay. Well, for one, uh, we record at meetups or at events so that we can post things back online for folks to go back if you can't make it. We already had someone reach out saying, I can't make it tonight. Is Tech Omaha going to be recording? Yes, we are. And hopefully we'll be recording at more things as time goes on. Um, but to back up a bit, uh, we have uh, an official description of who we are, and that's a group of passionate technologists working to build a stronger tech community in Omaha. So a little bit different than um, a lot of the other meetups you're going to hear tonight, because we're not necessarily a meetup. We um, see ourselves as a group of folks who are supporting meetups and user groups and, and different things that are going on within the tech community as a whole in Omaha. Um, and really, it's an interdisciplinary team, which I think has been really cool since I've been involved. We have developers, like Jennifer said, I'm a developer. Um, two other folks who are uh, part of Tech Omaha in this room right now are also developers. Um, but then we also have folks who are leading companies. We have someone who works in QA. We have, um, I guess, more developers, <laughs> mostly developers. Um, and so it's really cool when we get together uh, once a month. Right now, I think we're on a every three week basis to kind of talk through some initiatives that we're either working on or things that we would like to see Tech Omaha provide to the greater community. Um, so how a lot of you might be familiar with Tech Omaha is the calendar. Uh, I found out from Ryan tonight, I didn't have the exact dates, but Ryan started the Tech Omaha events calendar, which is just a whole bunch of tech related events in Omaha more than 10 years ago. So I don't know if this is official or not, but uh, I'm calling it the longest running tech events calendar in Omaha. Trademark Tech Omaha, that's us, um, <laughs> which is fun. We also, about five years ago, people with a better um, knowledge of history would know more than me, but uh, a bunch of user groups got together and were like, hey, let's have a party and let's all get together instead of the so Ruby folks over here and the Ojug folks over here. And so they started doing the Tech Omaha happy hours. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to those, but they're a great time. Like we said, the next one is coming up in December, December 5th. The last one we just had in conjunction with the Nebraska Code Conference back in June. Um, and that was more than 400 people. It's not a totally accurate count. It's based on how many t-shirts we gave out because there's free t-shirts along with the booze and the food. So come for that as well. Um, but so we do that twice a year. And uh, those are kind of our two ma main offerings that we have for the community right now. But what we're looking to do is build up the kinds of things that we can offer. More of these recordings. We recorded every single track at Bar Camp this past year and uh, have been getting those posted. Uh, and then uh, offering recordings at meetups like this. So that's all on our website. Uh, but we also are looking to offer things for folks like you who are running meetups, possibly. If you're looking for any sort of assistance, we're looking at ways that we can better support you. There was recently a survey that we sent out that uh, many of you might have gotten, kind of answering questions about uh, needs that you might have or things that we could do for you. Uh, so that might involve, we, we've recently uh, written our own code of conduct and we would like to offer that out to folks to use. Uh, we have ideas in the works of things that we could do like learning from experienced user groups like OJUG. How, uh, what learnings have you had over the years and how can we kind of condense those down to folks who are wanting to start new meetup groups so that they can grow up to the, be the same, uh, be as successful as OJUG has been. Uh, we also have other ideas that we're working on. Someone wants to do a newsletter. Uh, there's all sorts of different things that people want to be doing. And uh, basically what it boils down to is uh, enough manpower. <laughs> so if you're wondering, hey, how can I get involved? We're not like a lot of the other groups here where you necessarily just show up on the third Thursday of the month and we'll be there to talk about what we're doing. Um, but we do have meetings that you are welcome to attend. Um, we just would probably need to let you know when those are because they're not super scheduled. Um, so you can reach out to us, to me directly. You can reach out to Tech Omaha, at Tech Omaha on Twitter. Anywhere that you can find Tech Omaha, we'll be happy to get back in touch with you. TechOmaha at gmail.com uh, is also another way you can get in touch with us. Or even if you don't have time to get involved, but you say, hey, it'd be really great if we had this going on in this community, I think Tech Omaha might be a great place for that to live, for a certain idea you have. Reach out, let us know what we can do to, to help and to grow a stronger tech community. So yeah. That's Tech Omaha. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, Jennifer. Uh, and thanks, Ojug, uh, for inviting me. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, I help co-organize Learn Swift Omaha. 
Some of you in the room might be more familiar with the Mobile Meetup or Mobile Meetup Omaha. That was kind of the longer history of our meetup groups, um, and that pretty much covered all mobile topics, hybrid, things like that. Uh, we've since sort of splintered into two meetups, so uh, you'll hear more about the Google Developer Group later, which is the Android sort of version, and then we have Learn Swift Omaha, which is the Apple iOS version. Um, so the big thing I would stress there, uh, Learn Swift is sort of a bigger collection of meetups across the country, but it's not just about Swift. We've had topics in the past about tvOS, watch apps, macOS, iOS, uh, hybrid talks, um, just sort of like general how to be a better developer, some soft skills talks. Um, so we like to kind of keep sort of a broad range and not be too confined in our little like Apple land box. Um, so I'd encourage any of you who are just dabbling in iOS, interested in iOS, want to get more interested in mobile, you'll be in good company. Uh, we have a pretty good mix of hobbyists as well as some people who professionally develop iOS apps. So we're you know, very welcoming to both of you. Um, if any of that sounded appealing, some info about where we're located, it's at Client Resources, Inc., which is basically right up the street, the Travel and Transport Building on the 13th floor. Um, there's signs up. It's the first Wednesday of every month. And uh, we start at 5.30 usually. Um, all that info, though, is bundled up nicely for you on meetup.com. So I'd encourage you to go there, uh, join the group if you're interested, and then you'll get our emails when we announce the topics we're going to talk about. Usually our format follows a beginner talk. So we'll have sort of a casual happy hour, enjoy some pizza and drinks. Then we'll have a beginner talk for a shorter period to give just a light dose of some information, and then a short break, and then more of an advanced talk where we'll usually deep dive into some other topics. So you're also welcome to join one or the other. Most people stay for both because you usually have something to gain from either one. Um, so yeah, I would say in a quick nutshell, that is everything you would want to know about Learn Swift. Uh, the only extension I would tack on the end. If you're interested in mobile or anything like that, but the meetup time's hard to get to, or you're looking for more information, things like that, um, myself as well as David Carrado are super excited to help anyone out who's interested in getting started. Um, so definitely reach out on meetup.com to organizers, and we could set something up, whether it's tutoring, mentoring, uh, code tutorials, useful resources, any of that stuff, uh, super excited to help out. So for anyone who's interested in getting more involved in mobile or iOS specifically, definitely let me know. Thanks. So hi, I'm Phil Bramer, Omaha SQL user group leader. How many of you have uh, been to one of our meetings? Just a few? <laughs> All the way in the back, that's great. Um, Oh, the Omaha SQL user group has been in Omaha for many, many, many years. Um, we've actually gone through several different um, uh, facilitators. I've been at it for, I don't know, four or five years now. Um, our membership are primarily database administrators. Um, we do have students, uh, professors attending. We have um, people looking for free meals. So yes, we do <laughs> offer um, lunch, uh, I'm sorry, dinner uh, prior to the meeting. A little bit of background, we um, have a website, omahasql.com. So pretty easy when you're looking for SQL resources in Omaha. Um, typically we post on there our meeting information. Um, we also post on Meetup, so follow us there. Uh, let's see, Twitter, Omaha, SSUG, SQL Server User Group. Uh, let's see, we have about 30 members in, on average attending our uh, meetings. We meet once a month, typically. Uh, it's been a little slow lately. Uh, first Wednesdays of the month, 6 to 8 p.m. Um, we do meet here if we can get it. Um, lately, we've been meeting at Builder Trend, 118th and I Street. Um, so we welcome anybody. Our topics range anywhere from uh, database administration, business intelligence, uh, so report writing or um, working with big data, we've done a little bit of that. Data science, we talk about certifications, security. Once or twice a year, uh, we will bring people together to just bring your own problem. So get out the whiteboard, just talk, no planned event. Um, just raise your hand, what do you got going on that you want the community to help you out with? 
uh, works so much better when we can get in a collaborative session like that as opposed to emailing or Twitter. Um, we do have, uh, our community is unique in that um, there are so many resources. It's not quite unique in the tech community, but the Microsoft stack is well documented online with forums and all kinds of avenues of help. And that works great. That's kind of how I got my roots, learning the trade uh, through forums and things like that, but bringing people together to bring their own problems that they might not be able to get uh, at their place of business or in their own uh, community. Um, we are sponsored by SQL Pass. So if you've heard about that, um, that's one of the largest organizations focusing on what used to be SQL Server. Um, now they're branching off into uh, business intelligence and all sorts of um, great avenues. Um, so we carry their brand. Um, and so with that comes the ability for us to reach out into their marketing, use their uh, resources as well um, from a speaker pool. Um, and also the best benefit is we host what's called a SQL Saturday. Um, in the area, you're going to find one of those uh, about once a year. Uh, we actually trade off with Lincoln. Uh, so Omaha is every other year. We usually host it across the street at UNO. Uh, it's a completely free event all day on a Saturday, uh, roughly eight to five. Um, we've had, I think, around 30 different uh, classes or sessions throughout the day. Uh, so do look out for that. This year uh, is Lincoln, and so look for us next year. Uh, we don't have a date yet, but May, um, late May or August time frame. So we have to kind of uh, balance with the uh, university's uh, student schedule and stuff. But we have a fantastic facility over there. Um, so do look forward to that. And let's see. Yeah, we really, um, six to eight. We really like just kind of getting together and solving, you know, data problems. So anything data related, um, you know, if you want to speak on it, if you want to learn more on it, just reach out to me uh, at Phil Bramer on Twitter, phil.bramer at omahasql.com, um, omahasql.com uh, for more information and just kind of keep an eye out there. We haven't had meetings in a while, so um, we'll look to get that scheduled and um, hopefully get more speakers and more uh, topics uh, sent our way. So, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. Hello. I'll try and, try and go through this quick so we can do some karaoke. Uh, <laughs> so I'm here talking about Nebraska.js. And Nebraska.js is probably one of, the, one of the most unique groups in Omaha uh, just because of the language. And if you are working on anything that touches the web, you're probably using JavaScript somewhere. So come to our meetup. It, we're very welcoming. Um, just a little bit of background. Uh, it was originally started in 2009 as the jQuery meetup. And then it was renamed uh, in, actually, the, I think 2000. I don't remember. the. I got the dates wrong. But eventually, it was renamed to the front end developer and jQuery meetup. And then jQuery was dropped off of that in 2013. And now we're in Nebraska.js to focus on all things JavaScript uh, as jQuery and other um, front end and, and the front end have kind of not been as important. The front end is still super important, but jQuery is not nearly as much. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, we renamed. Uh, we have our meetings right here at Blue Cross Blue Shield. So thank you for that, and Jonathan for setting that up. And we have our food sponsored by Agape Red. So thank you, Charlie. <clears throat> and we meet on the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, we're trying to get better about being monthly. So please come speak. <laughs> we need speakers. Uh, in fact, next month, October 2nd, is our meetup. And we are doing a series of lightning talks. So just five minute, 10 minute talks, whatever you'd like to do. We want to welcome you to come do that. We want new speakers. We want uh, speakers from all skill levels. So don't give me the excuse that you're, you don't know JavaScript very well. I want to know what skill level you're at. And, and everybody can learn from you from that. So please come join us. Uh, we do record all, all of our talks and put them online on YouTube uh, and on our website, nebraskajs.com. We're on Twitter uh, at, as NebraskaJS. And we also uh, run a conference, the Nebraska JavaScript Conference, which just happened in July. We had speakers from all over the world come speak. And we also have speakers from local, from Omaha uh, or Nebraska talk as well. So uh, please check that out. The videos for that will be coming out online pretty soon. And uh, just some unique things about our group. We do try and have um, longer discussion topics. 
lightning talks. And we also try and do kind of fun workshoppy type things. We've had open source contributions in the past. So an open source contributor night will come. We had a talk about giving, contributing to open source, how to get started with that. And at the end of the night, somebody actually contributed uh, a pull request to the node project. So uh, that was pretty cool. And then uh, we've also done BattleBots, which, are, which is a very fun little simple JavaScript game where you um, <clears throat> basically build a robot class in JavaScript and it runs against another robot class that somebody else built. And usually it's just completely random, but you tell it on this turn, move left. If you can see something, shoot or not shoot, or just spin in circles, which is my strategy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've done that a couple of times and we'll probably be doing that again soon. So we try and have fun with this and um, try and learn from each other. So thank you. Um, so by a show of hands, uh, who likes home improvement? Yeah, okay. What about sewing? Yeah, okay. 3D printing? Cool. Um, who knows how to weld? Who wants to learn how to weld? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, did I leave anybody out? Any, any other? Okay. Um, but wouldn't it be great if there were a place where you could go and do all of those things? Well, guess what? There's a bunch of places just like that called makerspaces all over the world. Seriously. Um, UNO has one. Uh, I know that the Do Space is a, is a really cool nonprofit. Um, but the Omaha Maker Group has a studio right on 84th and L uh, at uh, Just Behind Just Good Meats. And uh, where you can go and make just about anything. So our, our goal is to explore science, technology, and art. And the best part about doing that is to do it together, in my opinion. Um, we, we meet every Tuesday, and, uh, <clears throat> but we don't meet just every Tuesday because everybody who's a member has a key. So you can come to the space 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and ha um, and that, that $40 keeps the lights on and the toilet paper stocked because we're a nonprofit. We, you know, when we open Tuesdays, it's because a volunteer has come down to open the space for people to use the tools. Um, and, you know, we, uh, we crowdsource everything from the tools to the scrap pile to the beer selection, but there's usually some beer in the fridge. Um, <laughs> but that also solves the problem of somebody pay not paying for something that they don't want, right? So if, I don't, if I'm never gonna use the lathe, I don't have to contribute to that. Um, you know, and if somebody's not gonna use a sewing machine, they don't have to contribute to that either. And they can contribute how, everybody can contribute to the community how they see fit. So when we're not exploding pumpkins <laughs> with compressed air or accelerant, uh, we had, <laughs> <laughs> or with a chainsaw, um, we've had presentations about home automation, his, uh, the history of cameras um, and the fair repair bill. But we also like to build things together. Uh, we had to, we bought our 3D printer in pieces. So we all got together to do, to do that. Uh, and put that together um, as a group. We've also done things not just for ourselves. Uh, we've had a member help build um, a couple of food computers, which is a miniature, um, it's a miniature greenhouse. It's about the size of a computer case uh, for um, a, a local high school as an educational tool. Um, another one for UNO. Um, we've had speakers come from Go Baby Go who um, they do, they make mobility devices for disabled toddlers. Um, we've helped them with that. We've had another speaker come from Nebraska EPSCOR nonprofit, who um, their goal is to increase STEM teaching in Nebraska, and we help them design a better physics kit. And they, they ship these all over the state. Um, but some other cool things that we've done, one of our members spent weeks making a, a seven foot tall Tesla coil um, some other members, uh, just a few weeks ago, in fact, made a 34 pound dead blow hammer. It's, it's about this tall. Uh, and for reference, like 34 pounds is about three human heads worth. Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> not everybody is making oversized things. Um, you know, s some people, some people make, you know, just normal everyday things right, like baby blankets, um, you know, and, and you, know, you can see it's not, not quite done. So guess what I'll be doing on Tuesday? <laughs> um, 
But honestly, I could go buy an embroidery machine. I could go buy a lathe. I could go buy a saw and a hammer and all the drills and everything, but I wouldn't have any room in my garage and I wouldn't have enough money for that tank of gas. Um, <clears throat> but I, you know, more importantly, I like to call our group a co-op workshop um, because we, it's a good place to come to share tools and ideas and make Omaha a more creative place. So if you can't make it on Tuesday, um, you, you can come by any time that we are open. On our website, we have a little open placard. They'll say not open or open, and somebody will literally, th there's a little sign on the, in, as you walk in the door, you, you slide it open. Okay. <laughs> it, it's like Bluetooth, and it sends a thing to the website. So that's how you know we're open. And that's, that's us. Thank you. All right, so my name's Ben, and I help uh, run the Google Developer Group. Uh, we started as kind of an Android users group, Android app developers group, um, about three years ago. And we realized that Google actually sponsors groups like that, and so we became a GDG. And uh, that allows us to run Google-sponsored workshops every now and again and kind of teach the latest Google technologies in a workshop style. Um, and Google will sponsor swag and giveaways and the curriculum and stuff. So um, according to Google's website, GDGs are local groups of developers who are specifically interested in Google products and APIs. Um, <coughs> uh, typical meetings for us are on the second Tuesdays of the month. Um, we start at 5.30 and we end, uh, usually end at 7.30. And um, we have pizza and drinks and uh, we also meet at CRI, um, where the Swift meetup is. Um, and uh, also a typical night is a beginner talk and an advanced talk. And um, I think that's kind of the, the differentiating unique factor for me that I, I like about the GDG is that we try to be beginner friendly. And we always try to um, have new people teach about what they're actively learning. Um, and we try to help them with their presentations and kind of try to be beginner friendly that way. Um, the group does have a good mix of skill levels and so people who are a little bit more advanced uh, are really happy to help people who are beginning. Um, you can find us on Meetup as well, GDG Omaha, and that's our Twitter handle as well. <coughs> our next meeting's on October 9th at 5.30 and we don't have uh, speakers nailed down yet, but it's going to be the, the typical pattern of beginner and advanced talk. Um, we also mix it up <coughs> sometimes, and we'll do demo nights or lightning talks. Um, sometimes we'll do the workshops on the weekends. Um, sometimes, like right after Google I.O., we'll just do a discussion night and people will share their thoughts on the announcements. <coughs> and then our next workshop is starting to come together. We're going to be teaching Flutter development, which is Google's uh, hybrid development tool um, to build mobile apps. And we're going to be doing that the first couple of weekends in November. So stay tuned on Meetup and Twitter for information on that. And um, I also have little Android stickers and Google stickers. If anybody's interested in that, I can set them out back at the end if you want to pick one up. So thanks. So I'm here for that Omaha Agile Users Group. Have any of you guys been to one of our meetups? I mean, I think I've seen some folks. Um, uh, the meetup, that group was started in about 2010 by uh, Sally Alada, and it was really, the, the mission of our meetup group is to, is to just bring people who are um, interested in Agile, they've got things going on in their company, they want to learn more about, how do I do this? It's just, it's really, the mission of that meetup is a forum for that kind of stuff. Um, we, y when you come to one of our meetups, there's really a broad cross section in it. And it, I mean, y you can see it by the, the type of um, meetups that we have. You know, we've got developers, we've got managers, we've got product owners. Tonight, for example, is, uh, we have a meetup going on at Mutual of Omaha. It's an open house. We do a lot of the open houses. And uh, it's Mutual's uh, scaling Agile and business agility. So people come there. 
the meetup is uh, you go to different stations. Hey, how are we doing it here? How, how are you doing this? How are you handling, handling visibility and all that kind of stuff? So um, you'll see a lot of different kinds of people come to our meetup. Our locations vary, um, again, because of the open houses. So tonight's at Mutual. Actually, in November, I'm, I'm with CSG. CSG is going to host an open house in um, November for product management and making work visible. Um, Farm Credit is a location that hosts a lot of our meetups because they have a nice space for that that can hold quite a few people. Um, some, some meetups that we've had in the past that stick in my mind. We just had, actually Werner came and did a DevOps. How are we doing DevOps? That one was actually held at Marina, Agile Transformations. Um, uh, actually, Marina came to talk about product management. Oh. Yes, yes, that was actually the last one. Okay. Um, and that one was at Farm Credit, but came and talked about product management, uh, DevOps principles, and how Wer Warner was using those. A um, couple other uh, meetup uh, open houses. Huddle was one a few years ago. Um, we did Valmont earlier this year. Um, we're really trying, we, we did a survey earlier this year to kind of get feedback from members. Like, what else do you guys want to see? What other problems are you trying to solve? So trying to get some speakers and trying to get things. We try to line up speakers that, to kind of answer those questions for folks. Um, one that was kind of interesting a couple years ago, I'm a, like I, she said, I'm a scrum master and also a manager. So there was, we did one, we had someone come in and talk about, how do you do performance management if you're agile? Like, how is that different than how we usually do it? Let's talk about that, because it is different. So. Um, just a wide range of topics. We're on the meetup also, you can find us. We're usually meeting the third Tuesday every other month. We don't meet every month. Um, 5.30, we do have food and drinks. Um, not alcoholic drinks, but drinks. Um, so, any questions about anything with our group? Yeah, well, come and join us. Thank you. So yeah, I'm uh, Matt, I lead .NET user group. Um, who here is from the .NET user group? Have you guys gone? Not enough, all right, so you all should go, it's awesome. Um, so we, we talk about basically any technology that you can think of that you can use .NET with. So it's not strictly .NET, um, but uh, it, yeah, we're very, very open to that. And I, I, if you've been following what Microsoft is doing with .NET, I think you'd realize that uh, they're, they're opening that up, so. Uh, it, Microsoft is really a different company than it was even just three or four years ago. Um, so, uh, some fun facts about the .NET user group. It was started in May of, uh, yeah, May of 2001, so that makes it 17 years old. I was having a debate with uh, some of the other user group leaders if, if uh, we were the oldest. I don't think we are. We're pretty close. But uh, um, we have, that, that makes basically 176 estimated total meetings that we've had over the course of those 70, 17 years. Um, we've had basically two sets of leadership over the course of those years, so it's really consistent in terms of leaders. Um, uh, who's been to HDC? Who's been to HDC? So HDC was born out of the .NET user group. Joel Olson started that conference. He was one of the leaders for, for the, the user group back in probably the 2005 timeframe when HDC got started, so that's a uh, Kind of a, a fun legacy. Um, uh, so in, in 2012, one of our largest attendances was about 200 people where we had the, uh, the .NET Rocks podcast guys who uh, do a podcast. They've been doing it for as long as we've been around. Uh, but they came into town. We were able to draw 200 people and rented a room out at the Embassy Suites. And, and it, was, it was a lot of fun. So, uh, so in terms of leadership, I'm leading the group along with uh, Brian Olson. And uh, him and I uh, basically plan the meetings, get all the speakers, and figure out where we're going to host the meetings and that sort of thing. We also record all of our meetings, and John Harrow is responsible for uh, doing that. And all of our videos are posted online. So um, let's see. Uh, so we meet on the last Thursday of every month. We're very regular with that, uh, I think. In, in the whole time that I've been running it, we've had uh, one year where we've had less than, than our scheduled uh, planned meetings. If we don't, 
if we have a speaker cancel or whatever, Brian and I are always uh, ready with the topic uh, to present to our group. So um, we're, we think it's important to be consistent and uh, that's, that's definitely part of what we do. Um, we only have 11 meetings per year uh, because we combine the November, December meetings because that time frame gets a little bit hard to, to schedule around. But um, let's see. Uh, we've been recording those meetings for about six years. Um, we partner with dozens of uh, local s businesses for our sponsorships. Uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're representing the community uh, well, and so we, we, we don't want necessarily one company to, to uh, basically own the user group. So we, we uh, make sure that we're partnering with as many people as we can. And uh, uh, we do host, sometimes here, uh, and sometimes out at Farm Credit. And then uh, if our sponsors have a space, we'll, we'll uh, host it at their space too. So um, we, we send out those notices probably about two weeks before every meeting. So you'll know what that is. Uh, our meeting attendance is usually about 30 to 50 people. Um, like I said, uh, we sometimes go below that, sometimes go above it, but it's right around that number. Um, uh, food and drinks are provided, so no need to, to eat before you come or show up, show up hungry. Um, and uh, all of our speakers come from the community, so uh, they're members of our group. They're people that are out there building things and, and doing things with, with .NET. Um, so we have a, our website, which is Omaha MTG, Microsoft Technology Group, .com, or you can go to funwith.net uh, if you want to do that. Uh, we have a Slack channel which you can find in, in, uh, on that website, and then uh, all of our videos are posted on Vi Vimeo. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of our recent meetings, but uh, we do have one coming up next week. The topic of that will be serverless and with uh, Azure Functions. Um, uh, we had a lightning round session last month, which was kind of fun. We had five different presenters present on five different things, not too dissimilar from this. Um, and then uh, a, a plethora of other stuff that you can find on our website. So. That is all I have. Thanks. So I'm Brad. We're here representing DC402, which uh, sounds like we're the newest group in the audience tonight. Uh, so DC402, the DC stands for DEF CON, uh, which you may have heard of. It's a large annual uh, hacker gathering, as they call it, down in Vegas every summer. Why they chose that in the middle of summer, I don't know. But they're on year 26, right? Or they just finished year 26. 27th year will be next year. So there's um, kind of outlets across the country, and so we're DC402, 402, 402 for being the area code. Um, there had been a small group of people, about seven to 10 folks that just kind of met um, informally uh, every month to kind of get together, talk about things, and about a year ago, some of us thought we should uh, kind of grow up, be a little bit more adult, and started to make it an actual thing. So as an official organization, DC402 has only been around for about a year, not quite. Uh, but in that time, it's uh, grown. We've uh, tripled in size, and the people are showing up, which isn't hard when you start from 10. Um, but we've in fact we've outgrown the meeting space we were in and just starting last week we had our first meeting at DJ's dugout in the Miracle Hills area. And so last, uh, last week was this month's meeting and so it's the second Tuesday of every month from 6 to 8. Uh, we choose DJ's dugout because uh, people like to drink and people like the food and so they have it there. Uh, you do have to pay on your own for the time being. We occasionally have sponsors uh, pay for food and drink but generally you're on your own. In terms of topics, uh, one of the nice things about cybersecurity, it's all over the map, so your topics uh, can be really broad. Um, I missed it last week, I was out of town, but just the uh, topic, because I wasn't going to remember it. Do you remember the exact title? Um, he called it. It was Golden Girls was in the title. Yeah. It was a Thank more you. of a psychology oriented one. Yeah. Thank you for being a friend. How the Golden Girls can help us empathize with our users. Right. Um, so people try and have fun with their uh, topics. Sometimes we go super technical. Sometimes it's policy oriented. Like like the last one was more um, psychological, the user aspects of security. So we, we go all over the place, and a lot of people say that they sort of get something out of it, even if it's not their their um, specific area. We don't cater to specifically hardcore security folks or one particular piece. It's just, um, it, it tends to be heavily security oriented, security oriented um, but it's, it's like a hacking thing, right? So it, there's a lot of uh, pieces that are sort of just security around the edges kind of stuff that we focus on. Um, in fact, next month is um, a little more, or uh, two months from now is a little less security oriented, a little more hacking. We're going to be, our next two talks are going to be on blue teaming 
which is clearly security oriented. That's sort of the defensive side of things. And then after that, it's on uh, home security systems. So that's um, definitely security related, but there's a lot of hacking and hardware and gear and software and open source and all that. Um, so we, again, second Tuesday of every month is our meetings. We have a website, DC2 dc402.org. There's a Slack channel that uh, people can join. Last time I checked, I think there's roughly 75 people that are on there. Um, we usually have like bursts of activity right after the meetings or something in the press happens and people are on there talking. Uh, so it's a fairly active channel. Um, there's a learning channel in there yeah. for people that uh, um, would like to learn more and maybe don't have the, the same chops as everybody else. We have 80 people in Slack. Happy to, to let anybody in that wants to. Now we don't have the paid version, so we have to like invite everybody. And um, yeah, dc402.org, um, at DEFCON402. And uh, oh, uh, also, uh, we have a Meetup, if that works better for people. There's about 150 people on Meetup. Um, one other thing, we've tried to do some outreach. Um, it comes in uh, fits and starts. The, there was a makerspace of the do. Uh, do space earlier this year we had a booth there where we did some uh, passive Wi-Fi just to so people could see uh, what their phone was doing trying to connect to various Wi-Fi access points and we also had some little Caesar ciphers and little uh, toys or not toys but challenges for the kids that were to, there to do so we're always kind of looking to engage in the community um, with things like that um, and speaking of engaging in the community I'll let you talk about the kernel bit yeah we also have um, a sister effort going on it's not uh, strictly with the DEFCON 402 group but we're going to do a uh, conference, a security hacking oriented conference in Omaha uh, next year. So it'll be April 5th and 6th. And uh, we're just getting everything. We got the hotel contract signed and things like that. So we're still um, uh, figuring out the, the details with the, um, the scheduling and the program and the sponsors and all that sort of thing. But it'll be downtown at the uh, Embassy Suites. Um, it'll be about $135 uh, for early registration. And uh, anybody can come, and your your badge will say hacker on it. So everybody that goes will like to be a hacker de facto. <laughs> I think that's Good. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. So uh, I'm Colleen Schinker. I'm with Women in Technology of the Heartland. And Women in Technology of the Heartland was founded in November 2012 by nine women who met at Bonefish Grill because we thought, hey, Omaha needs a networking organization for women so that we can connect and communicate and collaborate with the goal of advancing women in technology. So we got together for the first meeting and we had about 30 women out there that were all giving us ideas about what our mission should be. And you know, somebody kind of jokingly threw out there that for our mission, we don't want to be the only women in the room anymore. And everybody was like, yeah. So that made it into our mission statement actually. And, and so we've been operating off of that ever since. Um, our first meeting did occur in January of 2013, and five years later, we've got about 1,100 women or followers on Facebook, 1,200 on Meetup, and we get about uh, 25 to 70 people a month at our meetings, which we meet from uh, August until May. We don't, we don't meet in the summer months of June and July. So our topics are normally technical in nature, and we also throw in some soft skills so that it can help people to further their careers, and we also have some networking as well. Uh, we've, with, with has also enjoyed growing recognition in the Omaha area, and uh, we've served as speakers for organiz other organizations, other technical groups, uh, conferences, the Girl Scouts. Um, we've advanced careers through some of the networking that we've done and, and people have gotten jobs by coming to our, our functions. Uh, we've assisted the universities, some of the universities with their classroom content. And the community has also benefited from Women in Technology because we've done some outreaches like uh, getting diapers for Lydia House and the Omaha Food Bank. Uh, we don't have any membership dues. Most of our meetings are sponsored. If they're not sponsored, then typically you're, you're on your own and we try to find some place like DJ's Dugout uh, where they'll give you your own check, brazen head. Um, we have a monthly planning group that gets together and that's every month at uh, the brazen head on the first Thursday because that's happy hour. And uh, I wanted to thank especially Stephanie Hickey because uh, during one of those planning sessions, it was brought up, hey, we should, you know, get some of the other user groups in town together so that everybody can find out what everybody else is doing. And she took the bull by the horns and met up with the OJUG people, and here we all are. Um, so other people that are here from our, our planning group are uh, uh, 
Rachel Caldwell, Maria Schneider, uh, Madeline Galuzia, Jennifer Noteware, uh, Stephanie Peterson, Susan Haller, and uh, Pam Haggy. Uh, and they represent the companies of Nebraska Furniture Mart, Werner Enterprises, Leo Daly, First National Bank, Client Resources, Tech Systems, Mutual of Omaha, Harbinger Partners, and Cherwell Software. So we have a great mix of both business companies, uh, some recruiting companies, and some software companies that, that often come to our meetings. Uh, the upcoming topics that we have, October 16th, Rodney Verhoof, who is a Creighton University program leader at the Hyder College of Business, he's going to do a session on emotional intelligence at Leo Daly, and that's going to be from 5.30 to 7 o'clock on October 16th. If you're not familiar with emotional intelligence, it's the ability to manage your own emotions and the emotions of others, which comes in really handy if you're married. Um, it <laughs> includes things like the ability to harness your emotions and apply them to tasks like thinking and problem solving and cheering up and calming people down, which is often needed in the workplace, <laughs> at least where I work. Um, Rodney is a program leader and a scientist and he's focused on building business value and uh, through using your psychological capital. So come to that one October 16th. We also, um, for November 13th, we've got Stacy Elridge. She's the manager of cybersecurity at Lincoln Electric, and her topic is going to be business email compromise, what it looks like, and what you can do to protect yourself. And since we all use email so much, I think that that's going to be a good topic um, for us as well. That one is going to be at CRI. Uh, December 18th, we're going to have a networking event. We haven't determined the place yet, but it's going to be a lot of fun, so everybody should come out and, and join us on that. Some of our past topics, in August we had data science, and that was uh, uh, Nerosha Rathanayaki. She's a data scientist at Union Pacific, and she talked about what data science is and how companies can use it to solve problems and to gain the competitive advantage. Uh, May last year we had uh, Intro to UX, and that was Bianca Zangroni. She's a UX designer with Farm Credit Services, and she talked about how she figured out a way to merge her p passion for problem solving with her love of psychology and then to present user interfaces in a more meaningful way. And so good for her for figuring that out. Um, April last year we had Professor Anna Verhoof and she did a session on giving and receiving constructive feedback. You know, Giving and receiving, giving feedback is usually the focus when you're going to a session on something like that. But Anna taught us that the receiving end of this is actually the actionable part. And that's what adds value to the person or the company. So Anna taught us that you not only have to be able to dish it out, but you have to be able to take it. So, so we had a lot of fun with that one and learned a lot from Anna. Um, I'd like to invite everybody here to, we have a newsletter that we try to get out. We don't always do it every month, but we do it most of the time. But if you let us know what your topics are, we'd be happy to put it in our newsletter, put it on our Facebook, and I think we can all benefit from helping each other and you know, sharing what our activities and our meetings are coming up, and, and then it's better for all of the tech community in Omaha. So thank you all. And you know, because I'm also responsible for, you know, <laughs> <laughs> for the putting the the content up on our webs on our pages you know let's all let me get a picture of everybody and let's do something fun and do the live long and prosper sign either single-handed or double you you choose thanks <laughs> okay actually before I get moving on the Java stuff I also help lead the uh, Google Cloud Meetup, brand new meetup in Omaha. We meet, or are supposed to meet, third Thursday. Uh, last couple months we've had some scheduling uh, variations there. But uh, if you missed my Kubernetes talk here at OJUG, I'm giving that next week on Thursday at the Flywheel Underground, uh, 14th and Harney-ish. Okay, so uh, critical de details about OJUG. This is pretty much it. Uh, we meet here, <laughs> 6 o'clock for pizza, 6.30 for the presentation. Uh, we are blessed with consistent and awesome sponsors who always provide us food, soda, a place to have an awesome meeting, uh, drinks afterwards. Charlie, looking at you. Um, and so our mission is to foster community and education among all JVM enthusiasts in Omaha 
and the Midwest. Uh, I believe the, the, the talk seed that they gave us when they asked us to speak was, uh, what makes your meetup awesome and why would anyone want to come to your meetup? Uh, you should actually never come to the Omaha Java user group. You should every month, though, come to the Omaha JVM user group. <laughs> because to say it's just Java is far too narrow. Um, we have had Java talks, Groovy talks, Scala talks, Closure talks. Um, Kotlin. Kotlin, yes. We have had the CEO of Gradle and a Spring Evangelist. Uh, Aureus Group helped us. Uh, we co-met with Aureus Group, and, and they brought Vencat in. Uh, Subram, somebody help me with that. Um, thank you. Uh, we've had a Grails core team member. We've had scrappy startups come in and talk. We've had really big enterprise-y talks where half the people in the room don't have enough money to buy the product that is <laughs> being discussed. Um, we've had Agile consultants come in and talk about Agile and feelings and feelings about Agile. Uh, we've had interns speak, actually. Um, he's not in Omaha anymore. He works for, I think, J.P. Morgan out in New York. But a TD Ameritrade intern came in a couple months ago and uh, gave a nice speech. We've had indus industry reps from JFrog, Datomic, Hazelcast, and uh, people who got up here and didn't even say the word Java once, which we are totally accepting of. We've had TypeScript talks, Docker and Kubernetes, that one was my fault, bioinformatics, server, uh, serverless architecture, and AngularJS. Um, so why else would you want to come to OJUG if all that isn't enough? Uh, the networking's great. We have a small group of recruiters that you know hang out near the back room and don't really hassle anyone unless you happen to be in the job market. Um, as for the future, uh, as I kind of take over the primary organizer role in OJUG, I think that we're going to focus on improved outreach. There are just some Java shops in town that are really underrepresented at OJUG, and I'd like to see that change. Um, TD Ameritrade has 150 Java devs in Omaha, and I think we might get two of them who attend on a regular basis. Um, if possible, I'd like to try Twitch streaming the talks. That's something that Techlahoma does that I think is awesome. Uh, Juan Vasquez gave me an idea last night of doing virtual co-meetings with other user groups in like Des Moines, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, um, KC. The biggest challenge as an organizer, though, is I need to grow our speaker pipeline. We I can only remember in the last five years when we've once failed to give a talk, and that was because a speaker had like a family conflict that happened. Um, so we always produce, with, we always bring the content, but we're always just scraping by to figure out who's, a, who's about to speak. Um, so that's my huge challenge. I'd say to you, if, let me back up. I would say that everyone can give a talk. Don't think that just because you do it on a daily basis, that it's mundane to everyone else. You know, you might have been doing serverless for a year and a half, and it feels like old hat now, but half the room or three quarters of the room hasn't even touched it yet. So it is an interesting topic to them. Don't discount what you know as being uninteresting to others, uh, just because it's, it's your daily. So how can you help o OJUG? Show up every month. Two, bring a friend. Three, please speak. If you need help uh, forming a talk or pulling, uh, pulling one off, we're here to help. Contact me directly, and I will get you the resources you need to take, uh, take your idea all the way up to the stage. Thank you.